G'day kids, Ozzy here. Now we're right here at Madame Two Swords in Sydney and I've just got word that there's some superheroes from the Justice League inside that need our help. Oh, what was that? I don't know what's happening inside there kids, but I think we need to get in there and give them a hand. Are you brave enough to help me? Come on, let's get inside and see what's happening. G'day kids, Ozzy here. Now just before we get stuck into today's episode, if you haven't seen it already, our merchandise is now live on our website, aussieforkids.com, where you can get all of your favorite Aussie items, like the Aussie hat, made especially for kids' heads, or the mini replica Aussie tea. How cool is that? All for our mini Aussie fans. And if you love Aussie that much, you can even get three things in a combo, a hat, a shirt, and a sweatband, all on our website. But one of my favorite items is this one, the Aussie socks, with this little touch here. Stay keen, kids, as always. Available right now on our website, aussieforkids.com. In the meantime, kids, enjoy this episode, and stay keen. Aussie, 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 oi! Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. Breaking news out of Metropolis. An explosion at LexCorp's central computer facility. An explosion! Oh, look at this. Who? This is Batman. It's Batman. Oh, no. Oh, Lex. They need our help, kids. They need our help. They need us to look for these things and hit them. And they're going to tell us what our mission is. Let's go, let's go. All right, kids, so did you hear what Batman said? He said, Lex Luthor has taken over the computer systems, the artificial intelligence, and we need to get in there and help the superheroes to save the world. So come on, let's go and see who we can find. It's the Flash. So this is Flash. Flash is the fastest man alive. He's actually faster than Superman. He's faster than faster than a speeding bullet. And it says, stand on the illuminated lightning bolts and run as fast as you can. This will help generate a speed force lightning bolt capable of frying Lex Luthor's artificial intelligence. So, let's do it. Let's see if we can run as fast as Flash. Ninety-nine kilometers per hour. I feel like I'm the Flash. All right, let's go and see what happens on the next part of the mission. Is that Wonder Woman? I wonder what she needs us to do. Let's click on this mission and we'll find out. The Amazon Princess, otherwise known as Wonder Woman, found the LexCorp transmitter and she knows just how to block the signal. She needs us to stand next to her and assume the power bracelet, that's the pose, to help her create a wrist blast strong enough to jam the transmission. So can you practice with me? That's the power bracelet pose. Let's go and do it next to Wonder Woman. We did it, kids. We helped Wonder Woman do that power pose and block those transmission signals. That's awesome, Wonder Woman. Thanks for showing us how to do that pose. Now, kids, let's go and see who else we can help. Oh, check this one out. That's Cyborg. Now, I know that Cyborg has incredible super speed, strength, stamina, and he can fly. It all comes from his mechanical parts, but I know he's also good with computer systems, so I reckon he's gonna be able to help us here today. 
But who have we got over here? Is that Superman? Is Superman trying to hold up a helicopter? Let's go and find out what he needs us to do. All right, kids, we've done two missions. Let's see what Superman needs us to do. Mission number three. Look, up in the sky. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's actually a helicopter, and it looks like Superman could certainly use some of our help to help him catch it and save the day. Do you have the strength to help the Man of Steel? Come on, let's go and see if we can help him. Come on, work with me, help me out here. Come on, kids, come on, come on. Uh, yeah, Superman, we did it. Well done, Superman. You're a super strong person. I'm glad I could help you. I'm gonna leave that with you. It looks like you've got that under control now. But let's go and see who else we can find. Who else needs our help, kids? Is that the bat signal? That's the bat signal, kids. And this is mission number four. Here on the rooftop of Gotham City Police Department, you'll see the equivalent of the superhero speed dial, the bat signal. Light the signal and shine it up to the night sky to summon the Dark Knight Detective, which means we're gonna use this big machine here and light up that bat signal into the sky and get Batman to come and help us. Come on, let's go Batman. Where are you? There he is, kids. Look at him. Look at the size of his muscles. Look how strong he is. Now, did you know that Batman doesn't have superpowers? He gets all his strength and his powers from his utility belt. And you can see there in his hand, he's got a Batarang, which is like a boomerang, and he throws that to catch the bad guys. He also uses his Batmobile, his Batboat, and his Batbike to catch the bad guys too. What a champion he is. Great work, Batman. I'm glad I could be of help. Thanks for your help, kids. Let's go and see who's next. What have we got here, kids? Mission number five. I think this is the last one. Alfred, it's Batman. I'll take it from here. Hey, hero, you've been a great help with the League, but we still need you for one last mission. I've hacked into the mainframe of the system, and what we need to do is put our hands on these poles and join the powers of the superheroes, and you kids and Aussie to help our last superhero, Aquaman, finish off this mission. Yes! We did it kids. How awesome is Aquaman? He is the king of Atlantis. He has superpowers such as super speed, super strength and he can even breathe underwater and the most awesome thing about Aquaman is that he can talk to animals so he can control sharks and whales and other sea animals to attack the bad guys on his behalf. Whew, this has been exhausting kids I want to thank you for your help. High five! Wow we kids catching bad guys is exhausting work. Thank you so much for joining me here at Madame Two Swords to help Aussie and the superheroes catch Lex Luthor. If you're ever in town, make sure you check out Madame Two Swords at Darling Harbour. This place is incredible. And these wax figures are just mind blowing. Kids, hope you've had fun. I certainly have. See you in the next video. Until then, whew, stay keen, stay safe.
G'day kids, Ozzy here. Now just before we get stuck into today's episode, if you haven't seen it already, our merchandise is now live on our website, aussieforkids.com, where you can get all of your favorite Aussie items, like the Aussie hat, made especially for kids' heads, or the mini replica Aussie tea. How cool is that? All for our mini Aussie fans. And if you love Aussie that much, you can even get three things in a combo, a hat, a shirt, and a sweatband, all on our website. But one of my favorite items is this one, the Aussie socks with this little touch here. Stay keen, kids, as always. Available right now on our website, aussieforkids.com. In the meantime, kids, enjoy this episode and stay keen. Aussie, 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 oi! Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day kids, Aussie here. Now today, I'm at the SES. Now does anyone know what that stands for? S E S State Emergency Service. Now the New South Wales SES are a volunteer based organisation that respond to floods, storms and tsunami emergencies all across New South Wales. Now we've got four of the amazing vehicles that they use to help out in these situations but I'm not going to tell you about it. Why don't we go and meet some people that work for the SES and find out all about it. Let's go and meet them. Hi. G'day, I'm Ozzy. I'm Rachel, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. And who have we got over here? Hi, I'm Damien, Ozzy. Damien, lovely to meet you. Yeah, likewise. All right, so you guys work for the SES, which I've just told the kids is State Emergency Service. That's right. And I've just told them that you guys respond to floods, storms, and tsunami. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about what you guys do and maybe show us some of these vehicles. So we're here to help the community 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's all day, every day. Every day. That's a lot. You must get tired. We do, but we've got a wonderful team okay. of, of volunteers across all our units that are, here, that are here to help. So kids, volunteers, these guys don't get paid to do what they do here. They volunteer their time to help out the community. How good is that? Okay. All right, so we've got four different vehicles here. Should we start with this one? Who's going to show me this? I'll do, I'll do that for you, Ozzy. Right, this is one of the uh, SES's uh, command vehicles. A command vehicle. That so sounds like a big job. It is a big job. Okay. It's, it's for our senior leaders and, right. and the vehicle is used to uh, assist in managing uh, and leading our response to those flood, storm and tsunami emergencies. Okay, so if there's an emergency, someone calls SES, the command vehicle, the command vehicle will drive out and they'll coordinate and direct people and tell our them what response. to do. Yep. Fantastic. And that's the command vehicle. There's some good fun stuff in there, but I can't help but notice there's a boat over your back there. There is indeed, and Rachel will be taking you right through oh, that. Excellent. So. All right, thanks, Damien. G'day, Hello. Rachel. So this is this your boat? This is what you look after? Yeah, so at the SES, our different units all have different resources to respond to different types of emergencies, and this is one of our flood response boats. Okay, so you drive to a flood some flood water mm -hmm. and you put the boat in and mm -hmm. this can you be used to go around and rescue people? Absolutely. We have big boats for rescuing big things like cows and sheep and, and horses when they get trapped by flood water. Yeah. And then something like this, it's a bit smaller. Right. It can go in much shallower water. So I've used uh, boats like this in rescues where people's houses have been flooded by water. Right. And it's, it's not a really big river, yeah. but it's enough water that they're stuck. And okay. so we can use something like this right. to go over to their house, float over, get them, sometimes their pets or their children, okay. and bring them back to safety. So sometimes on the news you might see a flood zone and, and the water's come up to someone's house. There might be someone standing at the, on the top of their house, on the top floor, or even on the roof. Yes. You can drive this over, grab them and their pets, and take them to a safer area. Absolutely. How good is that? And then you've got the bigger ones yes. for the, the animals in the, like, the rural areas, like cows and all sorts of farm animals. Yeah, we, um, it's our duty to protect persons and animals. So that includes our dogs and our cats and Amazing. our horses as well. That's great. Now, there's a little one on top. Yes. Same purpose, but it's got no motor. Yes. Okay, so you just row that, do you? Yeah, this is a people-powered one, so it takes okay. a bit of 
um, muscles and practice to, to get this one where it needs to go. Uh, the advantage though, of course, is that it only takes about this much water for okay. it to float. So uh, in times where you might have to cross different areas to get to someone, yeah. there might be a deep spot and we paddle and then there might be a really shallow, shallow spot where yep. we just walk it across. Uh, we, we have the tools to get where people need us to help them. Amazing. Now, speaking of tools, I, I imagine you've got a lot of tools in the back of your vehicle. Can we go and check that yeah, out? Yeah, absolutely. What's in the back of this thing? Yeah, so this vehicle is our specialist flood vehicle. So. Uh, unlike some of our other vehicles, it's often got not very much in the back so that when we have a flood emergency, we can put whatever it is we need in. So I can show you if you like. Oh, please. So I'm a flood rescue technician. Okay, so that's your specialist job in the SES, a flood rescue technician. Yes, yeah, so wow. I've done a specialist training to learn how to keep myself safe in flood water and also rescue other people. And with that training, we get a special kit. So okay. this is my kit here. And right. one of the main things that ends up in the back of a flood vehicle is our uh, flood technician's kit. As you okay. can see, we've got quite a bit of a bit of uh, gear. gear per person. So yeah. if we had a full uh, team in the car, that would be quite a lot of gear for us to be ready to rescue people. Absolutely, so when you say team, it's not just you that turns up to a flood by yourself and goes and rescues everybody. Absolutely not. How many not. people are we talking? Well, it does depend. Usually we'd have between three to five people on a team. Okay, that's a good sized team. Yeah, and that's part of the best part of being a volunteer is that we get to work with all different people from all different walks of life and we get good. to get this special training yeah, so good. that we can help our community. Amazing. Okay, Rachel, so can you talk me through some of your gear here? I noticed you've got, is that a skateboard helmet? Oh, it looks a bit like a skateboard helmet. This is my flood rescue helmet. Okay. And uh, in flood water, you can have all sorts of things. You could have trees branches, you could have floating signs, wall. you could yeah, have right. floating cars. Wow. So it's really important for us to protect our head when we're in the water. You want to keep yourself safe, don't you? Absolutely. Okay. And what else have we got here? There's a lot of orange fluoro <laughs> stuff. And what is that? Yes. Yeah, so this is my PFD. Uh, this is my jacket, again, to help me float in the flood water. Okay. So it's got lots of different tools to help me rescue. So you said PFD, PFD. Yeah. What does that stand for? So it's personal flotation device. Personal flotation device. So otherwise known as a life jacket, yeah? Yes, absolutely. Right. So this keeps helps me stay float in the water. Okay. Because I would get very tired if I had to do all that swimming. Absolutely. Under my own skin. And if you get tired or you get injured and you're not wearing the correct gear, it's very hard for you to keep anyone else safe, right? Absolutely. So we safety always, to yourself first. Yeah. So then you can help other people. We always want to help people. We need to keep ourselves safe. Though. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so that's that's pretty fancy looking. Yeah. Here's some whistles. Got, yeah, I've got this as a little little knife. Okay, so. if you need to cut rope or anything. Yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, in flood water, out in the boats, uh, we can get our fishing line, can get tangled around the motors and we might wow. need to cut that clear so that we can keep going. There's just so many hazards, which yeah. is why we say never go in flood water. Never go in flood water. You just never know what is going to be in there. Yeah, so if there is flood water, it's best to say, don't swim across it, walk across it, drive across it, just stay out. Stay out, yep. absolutely. Fair and you just, you just can't see and you can't know what's underneath. You might think that there was a footpath there yesterday, but water's really strong. It yeah. could have washed that away. And yeah. We just can't take that risk. You don't want to try and walk across that footpath that was there and then get washed away with it. Absolutely. No way. So you've got lots of other things happening. Yes. You've got a little knife there. Yes. You've got a carabiner. Yep. To, I guess put ropes onto. Yep. And then, is that a light? We do work at night. So when we have operators in the water, yep. the ground crew, because remember we said we work in a team, yes. we want to be able to see where they are. So we have our flashing light so that once we're in the water, uh, we're visible so we don't get lost. Okay. Well, you certainly are visible in that <laughs> high vis uh, colour there. Now, the pockets intrigue me. What's yes. in the pockets? Well, if I did happen to get lost, maybe something happened and I got swept away. Uh, in this pocket is my PLB, which are per is a personal locator beacon. PLB. Uh, yeah. Okay. And um, when, uh, if, if that happened, if I needed help in an emergency, I could activate this and it means the people at our state headquarters could track me and find me and, and send people to come and help. Amazing. All right. So everything's thought through to keep Absolutely. everyone safe, especially you guys. Now. There's a lot of other things around here. Is that some more PFDs mm -hmm. or life jackets? Yeah, can it is. It? Yeah, you can grab it. Yeah. So it's not 
only us we have to keep safe when we're rescuing people and we might need them on the boat or we might have to walk them across water we want on? them to be safe as well absolutely please so all of our SES vehicles, even the command vehicles, even the, the storm damage trucks, every vehicle carries these Everyone. in case we need it. Okay. Because if you need it, you need it. Yeah. So it's got to be there. Absolutely. Yeah. And this will keep me floating along if I am in the water. Absolutely. If I can't swim. Yes, okay. it will. It won't stop you from bobbing around. Of course. But it will stop you from sinking stop underneath. Stop from going under. All right, mm. good stuff. The one more piece of my kit that I'd like to show you uh, oh, is my handy dandy throw bag here. A throw bag? Yes. Okay. So if someone's in the water, getting in and swimming to them is our last option. Okay, if that's we, dangerous. Yeah, and then I might need rescuing. Mm. So if we can throw something to them or if we can uh, give, get them something to hold on to to help them right. float, then they can be more safe while we make a rescue plan. Okay. So with our throw bag, there's lots of rope all bundled That's up all in this little in bag. There. Yeah, it's all tucked in. How yeah, cool. And we, we can actually throw the bag yeah. so the person has something to catch. Okay. And we're holding on to the other uh, end. You hold on to the other and end. And we can pull them back, them back in. in. Yeah. Right. Is that kind of the same concept as the uh, rescue oh, tube there? The yeah. thing that the lifeguards use, right? Yes, yes, you might so have seen exactly this at the, the same beach on the beach. The pool. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's something you'd throw that and you'd hold on to the other end. Just yes. like the throw bag. Yes. And then you can wind them back in. Absolutely. Amazing. All right, that's some really cool gear. I might take off my PFD. Yes. And then I might go and check out some of the other vehicles. What do you think? No problem. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Here's a flashing light. Oh, so much stuff. Oh. A lightsaber! Star Wars! Luke, I am your father. That, that's a traffic wand that is not a lightsaber. Now this is a bigger vehicle, Damien, so can you tell me when and where this one's used. Aussie, this is our uh, latest generation light storm response vehicle. A light storm response, response vehicle. Truck. Sounds like uh, a Star Wars truck uh, or something. It is. Why don't you jump why don't you jump in? In the front? Yeah. Oh. Why, don't you, why don't you have a drive? Amazing. So as you can see it's really comfortable. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and and makes it easy for us to respond to the emergencies that we get called to. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so you've got some radios here. Yeah. So that you can talk to people. Talk, talk to our team, yep. talk to our state operations centre. Okay, excellent. So do you mind if we have a look at the back? Because let's, let's I know go. we've just spoken a lot about the floods and Rachel showed us the boat and the this different equipment that she uses. But what other kind of emergencies would you get called to? Something to do with storms, I presume. Yeah, so this, this vehicle is, is geared to support our teams in responding to storm emergencies. Okay. Um, and most mostly that involves trees, but um, coming down on, yeah. on roads or on even on houses. Oh, that's no um, fun. And that can result in in damage um, and obstruction. Yeah. Okay. And, and we need to be able to uh, respond to the needs of our community. Okay. Excellent. So, so you've got. All right. So I'm just going to check a few things out. It's got some ropes, some tarps. tarps yeah, okay. Which we use to um, make people's houses and and dwellings safe. Yeah. And, so and if a tree's protect. come down and knocked off some tiles or something, and they're getting wet. Yes, we put the tarps if up. We can't, if we can't repair the, the roof, ah, then we can tarp it. Okay. Um, Lots of this keeps our team safe. These are our height safety kits. Oh, some uh, ropes. Yeah, they, okay. but these, these are used for our teams. So when, when we ah. do go up on the roof. Oh, of course. To, to so they can strap in and, strap and, in and stay safe. And keep Excellent. safe. What are these things? Well, let's pull them out. So these, these, this is, what? these are our task lights. Um, task uh, lights. As you, as you heard earlier, um, we do a lot of work in the dark right. and, and so for the safety of our teams and so that we see what we're doing and we can do it quickly and efficiently okay this is our this is some of the lighting that we do use great so they're really so powerful lights they're really powerful they're multi-directional oh, they, they come out in in, in a, a tripod okay stand oh they come out and stand up stand up on the ground and they, and they run off our batteries which are on the other side but, excellent yeah. excellent okay then a, a that's helmet a, that's a helmet that, that our teams we wear when we're in the field so okay. um, we, uh, when we're out in the field, we always protect 
our heads. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, that, so that if something was something else was to fall down, yep. that we, uh, we, we're, we're protected. You don't put yourself in any more danger. No. You've got one of oh, these PFDs. flotation devices as well. Yes, and, and the PFD. And the PFD, um, the life jacket. So, so as, as you heard from Rachel, yeah. um, the, all our vehicles are set up to be able to respond to our flood emergencies. Amazing. So this vehicle has, has, has a similar amount of, of equipment for that. Just without the boat. Because our, flood, our flood, uh, flood technicians can be on a storm team as well. Okay. So. So it's important Excellent. that if they're on this vehicle, that they can assist in, in responding to a flood rescue. Okay, great stuff. All right, and we've got a fire extinguisher, and is this a, a Genero battery? Yeah, generator. A generator. Yeah. So that's where you get your power. Power, if, you if, we need to, if we're, if we're not close to, yeah. If yeah or if the electricity's out. Out, which it quite often is during major storm events. Okay, so. amazing. So everything you need is in here. Well, there's more. There's more? <laughs> can you show, oh, check it out. So, so for the, yeah, the kids have probably chainsaws. quite often seen chainsaws in use, and and so this vehicle carries three different size chainsaws. Wow! Small, medium, large, Aussie. All right, now so, Damon, I know we're probably not allowed to start them, but can I grab it and have a look? Absolutely, Aussie. Just pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> I do love a chainsaw. And then we've got the the safety sleeve on there to make sure that we are keeping our hands safe. Excellent. All right, and you've got three different sizes. You've got a big one there. That's for chopping down big, big branches, right? Big, big branches and, and trees that may fall, may fall onto roads. Yeah, right. So if someone at home notices a tree branch falling straight on the ground from the tree in their front yard, they call SES and you guys can come out and clean it all up? Well, we, we respond to emergency situations. So yeah. if, it's, if it's blocking access, uh, a road or right. a driveway, um, or is or is danger right. to to uh, the community? Okay. Then absolutely, um, residents and the community can call the SES um, on one three two five hundred for okay. emergency assistance. One three two five hundred, and that's only for New South Wales, right? Uh, that's actually the national number oh, national. for emergency, but each state does operate individually. So okay. e e there is a state emergency service within right. each state. So we are the, the New South Wales state emergency service, yeah. and we operate throughout the state, okay. in all, all corners of the state. Uh, and every other state has a similar agency uh, that provides the same service. Now, if there's a major flood or a major event that needs a lot of help, do you guys go to other states to help out or do other states come to you? Um, quite often, okay. uh, insignificant events, but um, quite often it's from within the state. Um, but there have been times that we've, we've uh, supported um, other, other, other states um, wow. when emergencies arise. So, How good uh, is that? Inclu including the ACT. Okay. Um, which well, is obviously our closest neighbour. You've got to help your neighbours out, don't you? Of course. So there you go, kids. The New South Wales SES. What an awesome episode that was. I hope you enjoyed learning all about what they do and meeting these amazing volunteers that keep us safe in storms, floods and tsunamis. Kids, we'll see you this weekend on another brand new episode of Aussie. Until then, stay keen and stay safe. If you haven't already, make sure you get a great up to help you hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any of the new and exciting videos that we put out. Speaking of new and exciting, if there's a video that you'd love to see Aussie do, make sure you send us a message on our socials, on Facebook or Instagram at Aussie for Kids. We'll see you again soon kids, and until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right. Stay keen, kids. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, Aussie here. Today we've come along to Madame Two Swords right here in Darling Harbour in Sydney and we're going to check out some of these Marvel characters behind us. Kids, they are awesome. You'll actually probably think that they're real because they're that lifelike. So come on, let's go check them out. So kids, this is the first of the wax figures here in the Marvel section at Madame Two Swords and this, do you know who this is? Yeah, he's one of my favourites. That's Iron Man. 
and this suit was designed by a man named Tony Stark and when he puts this suit on, he's almost unstoppable. He has superpowers like super strength, he can fly, he's got durability and with these hands, he has so many weapons in there to defend all those bad guys. And right now, I'm gonna become an Aussie Iron Man. Look what I've found here, kids. Do you know who this superhero is? It's Spider-Man, of course, otherwise known as Spidey or Webhead. Now, Spider-Man came about when Peter Parker was bitten by a radioactive spider and he got superhero powers, which allows him to sense when danger's around and also to climb anything that's really tall, like tall buildings and even glass. And one of his awesome superpowers is it enables him to shoot webs out of his hand. Pretty cool, hey? Now one other thing, do you know why he wears a mask? Because he gets a little bit scared as well. It's okay to be scared sometimes, even superheroes get scared, and that's so that the enemy can't see that he's a little bit scared. But how brave is he? What an awesome superhero. Whoa! Kids, I think just by being next to Spider-Man for so long, I've got some of his superpowers, because right now, I'm upside down. How cool is this? So kid, this here is Wolverine. And Wolverine was born with the superhuman senses and the ability to heal from any kind of injury or wound. How handy would that be? Now Wolverine is played in the Marvel movies by an Australian actor called Hugh Jackman. He is amazing. And one of the awesome things about Wolverine is these swords that comes out at the end of his fists. Now check these out. Can you imagine having those spears on the end of your hands? Certainly make eating dinner pretty difficult, wouldn't it? But how awesome is Wolverine? So kids, this is Captain Marvel, one of the Avengers. She has superhuman powers like strength, speed, endurance and stamina and she has the ability to siphon cosmic energy making her strong enough to break through metal. She can also fly at incredible speeds allowing her to break through the atmosphere and fly into space. She is awesome. Now check this out kids, this amazing screen over here allows Ozzy to get Captain Marvel's strength. So there you go kids, how cool are these Marvel characters in wax figurines right here at Madame Two Swords in Darling Harbour. Kids, I reckon you'd love it if you come along, get up close and personal and learn all about these characters. They look so real. Kids, we'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay keen, keep working on those superpowers. G'day kids, it's Ozzy here. Today we've come along to the New South Wales Ambulance Superstation. Wow, there's a lot of ambulances. Oh, how good is that? Wow. Wow. There is so much stuff in here. So we've got lots of oxygen stuff, we've got spare parts, and a burns kit.
G'day kids, Ozzy here. Now just before we get stuck into today's episode, if you haven't seen it already, our merchandise is now live on our website, aussieforkids.com, where you can get all of your favorite Aussie items, like the Aussie hat, made especially for kids' heads, or the mini replica Aussie tee. How cool is that? All for our mini Aussie fans. And if you love Aussie that much, you can even get three things in a combo, a hat, a shirt, and a sweatband, all on our website. But one of my favorite items is this one, the Aussie socks with this little touch here. Stay keen, kids, as always. Available right now on our website, aussieforkids.com. In the meantime, kids, enjoy this episode and stay keen. Aussie, 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 oi! Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day Aussie. G'day kids, it's Aussie here. Today we've come along to the New South Wales Ambulance Superstation in Liverpool. Now this place is massive, there's heaps of ambulances and lots of paramedics and this is where they send out all the ambulances when you call triple zero and you live somewhere around this area. So we're going to go along and we're going to meet some paramedics, hopefully, I'm going to check out some ambulances and see what amazing work these guys do. So come on kids, this is going to be good, let's go. New South Wales Ambulance. Let's ring the button and see who comes to answer the door. G'day, it's Aussie here. Hey, Aussie. Oh, look at this. We've got a couple of paramedics to come and join us. Hello, Josh. G'day, I'm Aussie. Nice to meet you, Josh. Hey, Aussie, Dakota. Hey, Dakota. Hi, Thanks come on for in. Having, thanks for having me. Let's go, kids. All right, so this is where all the ambulances live. They do, they sleep here. They sleep here, and how many ambulances do you usually have that sleep here when they're not out on the road looking after people? Uh, we have anywhere between uh, 20 to 30 different types of ambulances at one time. That's a lot. Um, yeah, so. This place is huge. Yeah, very big. Um, one of the biggest in the Southern Hemisphere. Wow, that's massive. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's lots of, I can see just looking around, there's a few cars with ambulances on them and mm -hmm. then, and the, well, the ambulance logo, and then there's some big vans. What are the differences between these? Um, some of these are our manager cars, so oh, okay. our, our um, hospital managers um, and then some of our single responders, like okay. this one here, goes off-road, four-wheel driving sometimes. Okay. Um, and then the ones you see on this side are the ones that you'll get when you call triple zero most of the time. So right. they have a bed and lots of equipment. So. Right, yeah. a bed, not for sleeping, right? Not for sleeping. That's for you can try treated. and have a nap. That's yeah. for getting treated, is that right? Yes, yeah, we fix you up. Amazing. Now, we're going to have a look at those in more detail, but I can't help but notice um, did someone stick that on backwards, Josh? Oh, good question. When you're driving this way and you look in your rear view mirror, yeah. this will say ambulance as you would read it. When you look in the mirror... Yeah, crazy, hey. That turns around. Yeah. So it's like a magic it's a sign. Magic, it's, and it's also reflective. It's reflective. So if it's at night, it'll stand out even more. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. All right, so looking at all these ambulances here, you've got that reflective um, material that really bright yellow, so that's so that you guys can be seen as you're driving down the road, mm -hmm. is that right? Mm -hmm. Amazing. All right, so this looks like a cool looking ambulance. Can we have a little tour around it, perhaps? Yeah, yeah. So these are flashing lights, and then when you guys put those on, they are flashing red and blue, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Like all the other emergency services yep. around uh, New South Wales and around Australia and generally around the world, right? We have sirens as well. Sirens as well, yeah. so that's so that people can hear you coming down the road. Yep. And if I'm driving down the road and you guys are coming down behind me with the sirens going and the flashing lights going, what do mm -hmm. I have to do as a driver? Do I have to pull very, over? Very, very important is we don't do anything too suddenly. We do everything safe. So um, firstly, you slow down a little bit, right. check that it's safe, and then you're going to move to the left. Okay. So we're taught to stay in the right lane right. Um, out of traffic, and then if you slow down, look left, indicate, and move out of your way when it's safe to do so, we can pass through. It'd be okay. really helpful. And for all the kids out there, when they hear the sirens and see the flashing lights, mm -hmm. 
But sometimes some of them might get a little bit worried, right? But there's nothing to be worried about, is No, there? no, no. So um, lights and sirens usually mean that we just want to help very quickly. Right. So um, best thing is that if you're crossing the street or about to cross the street and you hear the lights and sirens, you make sure that you get to the pathway and stay safe. Okay. Uh, so you're not in the road um, and make sure we don't try and run out to see uh, the lights and sirens. So stay safe okay. because we're trying to concentrate and drive quickly and safe. Right. So, so for kids, it is a little bit exciting sometimes. Yeah, very. But you can't just run out and try and, yeah. you know, and go and give the paramedics high five. We you love keep waving. Just give them a wave. Yeah, yeah but safely. So do love yeah, yeah we kids. do. We're happy to give you a wave. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Now, for um, the kids at home and for anyone watching this, what do I have to call so that I can get you guys? If I've hurt myself or someone that around someone around me is actually hurt and I need to get your attention, what oh, do I call? Which number to call? Which number do oh, I yeah, call, Josh? It's three numbers, zero, zero, and zero. Zero, zero, zero. Pick triple up your phone, zero. zero, zero, zero. Okay. Exactly right, triple Amazing. zero. So for the kids out there, if mum and dad or one of the grown-ups in their lives has a fall or something, you know, they're unconscious and they're a bit worried about their health, the kids pick up the phone, call zero, 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 and then what do they say? If you want an ambulance, you need to ask for an ambulance. Okay. And then the person on the other end of the phone, they're always very nice. Yeah. They'll give you directions as to the next step. And one of the questions they ask is, what's your home address? What's your home address? What's your home address? Cause wow, kids, do you know what your home address is? Okay, so that's probably a question that a lot of kids might not be able to answer. So maybe this is a good time to tell the kids out there that it's a good thing to know your home address. So I live at number such and such on mm -hmm whatever the street name is. Yep. Yep. And then the ambulance operator can say, okay, little Johnny, we'll exactly. send an ambulance out so we can take and, care of your mum or dad. And then we know where to go. Yeah, exactly. of course. Yeah. Amazing. All right, so there's some really important things. Let's go and have a look at the rest of this vehicle on the outside, shall we? So I, this is the driver's door, I think. Mm -hmm. Around the front. Oh, look, there's another one of those backward signs. Cool, isn't it? <laughs> it's very cool. Yeah. And then you've got the lights up the top and intensive care. So there's a few different types of ambulances. I saw the one over there said emergency ambulance. This mm -hmm. one says intensive care. Mm -hmm. So there's a few different types of jobs that you guys do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're in intensive care ambulance. Right. Um, Sometimes if um, paramedics that come to you need a little bit extra help, right. um, we carry a few more little um, different medicines and things like that that we can help uh, make you feel better. Okay. Um, and there's a couple other ones, other ambulances that get around as well. You might see um, some little vans or like we said before with the four wheel drive ambulance. So yep. um, we just bring a little bit extra if you need. So, okay. Yeah. Cool. Now, do you mind if we have a look inside the ambulance? I've actually never been inside an ambulance. So can you guys give me a tour? Absolutely. Yeah, Amazing. All right, do you mind if I sit? Hop in. Yes. All right, so welcome to the front of the ambulance. So what are all these things, Josh? These are the lights, so if we try to find a home at night, we can push them and it lights up spotlights on the oh, side. It so we can see, outside. So we can see the houses and the numbers on the mailbox. Yeah, cool. And sometimes, if it was a car accident, for example, and we, on the side of the road, we'll turn them on so we can see okay. what's going on if we need to, to do some work outside the ambulance. Some treatment to someone that might be sick or injured. Exactly. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Now, when those lights up there go on, is that because you press one of these buttons here? It's one of these two buttons. These are the lights. Yeah. And this is a siren. Can we press it? Yeah, these are pretty fancy buttons too. I just want to show you this. You can push it up and you can push it down as well. I can see it, it's reflecting off all the walls in here. Why don't you have a go? <laughs> How good is that? And is it going to be too loud if I press the siren in here? Uh, it won't actually work because oh. the handbrake is on and it's a safety thing. Okay. So you can only put, turn the siren on when the handbrake's off, so when you're driving. Click it and see what happens. Nothing. Nothing. It says handbrake is on. Hear that sound? Handbrake is on. All right, now what's this thing, Josh? Now, little, is that so you can watch some um, some movies or stuff when you're just cruising around? Oh, no. No, Possibly. we don't have time for that. No way. This is where we get the information. It tells us the address and it tells us a little bit about what we're going to. Okay. So what the problem is, if someone's sick, it comes up on this. Okay. So when you call triple zero for the kids out there, zero, 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 
and you're at home and you're giving the operator on the other end of the line your home address because you've learnt it, I'll leave it at such and such number at such and such street. They're typing it in, it goes through the computer system to here. Magic. So when you're driving, it'll all pop up and mm -hmm. then you can just drive straight to that address and it will, can we, can we have a look in there? Yeah, we can, I'll show you the, um, an example. So this one here, it just gives us some information like that. And okay. then we, we have buttons down here as well. Right. So when we arrive at the address, we can click, we're here. Right. And then our control center knows that we're there. That you've arrived. Mm. Okay, so the people working in the control center must have a really important job. Is that right, Josh? Yeah, they're taking calls important. from people all around the place and they're trying to figure out which ambulance is where and who to send to the next job exactly. and help the next sick or injured person. Yeah, very important. Amazing. There's some cool stuff going on behind me. Do you mind if we have a look behind there? Yeah, for sure, come on. All right, so that's the front of the ambulance, but I'm really keen to see what's in the back. Dakota, do you mind if I go and check it out? Open it up. Yes. Wow, there is a lot of stuff in there. It is, yeah, it's like a mini hospital almost. It's a hospital on wheels. Yeah. Amazing, so don't tell me you know what everything in here does. Absolutely. It's our job to know what all of our tools are, just like a mechanic or if your mum or dad's a plumber or electrician, they yeah. have to know all of their tools all the time. So, Amazing. Yeah, every ambulance and every paramedic knows what every tool does. That's cool. Yeah. How long did it take you to learn all this stuff? How long have you been a paramedic? Oh, uh, so um, you have to be in school for a really long time. Yeah. And you have to be really focused yep. and get good marks so that you can go to university. So okay. university degree is three years. Okay. And then you get to um, come with our one of um, our graduation programs. That's about a year. Okay. As a trainee. Wow. Then you get to become a paramedic. So it's, it's a, a little time. while, but it's an amazing job. Yeah. So um, I've been in health ten years as a paramedic uh, six. Okay. So, um, and then as on this big intensive care car, uh, one year. So, wow. Yeah, not very long. Amazing. Mm. What is it that you love about your job the most? Um, I think it's almost like a game of bingo every day. So you never know what you're going to get, you never know what number is going to be called, you never right. know what amazing opportunity happens um, you know, around the corner. So you know, wow. we could be in a big building or in a school or at the Easter show. So so every do. day is different for yeah. you guys. Every day. But I guess the same that you're always doing the same thing every day in terms of helping people yes, yeah. and making sure that the sick or the injured mm -hmm. are getting the care they need yeah. to then either go home with whatever it is, some treatment, or go to the next hospital. place, which is the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, you, so what you guys do, you get called to a job, you go and assess the patient, mm -hmm. you fix them up, get them into the back of here, yep. and then you drive lights and sirens to yep. the hospital, hand them over, say all the best, take care, be well. Yeah, that's it, be safe. And then you go and hit the road another and that one. computer pops up with another call yep. and says you've got a job over here. Yeah, sometimes we could do um, eight or ten of them a day. Eight so, or ten a day? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So um, by the time you know you call the ambulance and we drive to you and talk to you for a little bit, get to know you, treat you, drive you to hospital, it could be about an hour or two. Wow. Um, and then so that fills our 12 hour shift. So. 12 hour shift? Yeah, yeah. That's a long time. That's like two school days in one. Yeah. Yeah, wow, that's so. ages. Yeah, so we're 24 hours, so we're up all night and all day. So you can do some shifts overnight? Yeah, Which yeah. is why you need the lights on the vehicles. Yes, yeah, Because yeah. people don't just get sick or injured during the day. No. You don't go, sorry, it's after five o'clock now, I can't come and rescue you. Yeah. Every day of the year, Christmas, Easter, birthdays. Amazing. All right, can we have a look inside? Absolutely. It's been great chatting, but can we go and have a look yeah. inside? Wait, wait, Check out all first. this stuff. Now, I'm gonna let you guide me because I don't really know what does what? So these are the ones, if you see an ambulance, you'll probably see us grabbing these. Okay. One, two, three, sometimes four. Okay. So this one's for breathing. Okay. So we can get that one out if you'd like. This one has a big oxygen cylinder in it. Have a feel of that, Aussie. Oh, that's pretty heavy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that one's got a big oxygen cylinder. Okay. If you need help breathing, we've got everything in here that can help you breathe. Oh, wow. So if you have, some of your friends might have asthma. Yes. Yep, so this might be a kit that we'll use for asthma. Okay. So we might need to give you like a puffer, we give you in a nebulizer. Yeah. Yeah. So, so someone's so having an asthma attack or they're having yep. trouble breathing, this is the kit you use. Absolutely. And that's got the oxygen in it. Yeah. Amazing. All right. That's a very, very important kit by the looks of it. That is. Yeah. Then we've got our medicine kit. Medicine kit. Yeah. So, so it's probably got a few more things than just Panadol or something in oh, it. Oh, yeah? a couple more. You have to be a little bit sick to get some medicines. Yes. 
You don't just take medicines. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, there's a lot of uh, a lot of crazy looking packaging there. Absolutely. Lots of gadgets, lots of things. And you guys know how all this works and you know how much of the certain type of medicine to give to someone to treat their Absolutely. sickness or their injury. Yeah. Amazing. Then I'm not sure if you've ever seen on movies maybe when people might do CPR and then yeah. give people shocks. Yes. Yeah, so that's this machine. And what are they? What's this called? This is called a life pack or life a defibrillator. Pack. Defibrillator. So that's that machine again okay. with lots of other things to measure and take blood pressure. Okay. Temperature. We might take your blood pressure <clears throat> later. Yes. Absolutely. That'd be great. And then Hopefully I'm healthy. Yeah, I think you will be. And then this one is if you have any cuts or if you break any of your bones. Okay. So this one, we've got to break our oh, seal no. so we know that our stock is fresh because this oh. one is for cleaning wounds. Okay. So if you fall over and scrape your knee or you need an ice pack, we've got little ice packs in here as well and okay. bandages. Right. Snake bandages if you get a snake bite. Right. Okay. But, and there's band-aids in there, but I wouldn't call triple zero if I need a band-aid, would I? Not just a band-aid, no. no. I think if you can't stop the bleeding, or if you think you've broken a bone and your bone doesn't look like it's in the right place, yeah. definitely a job for us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, if your arm is all out here or your legs all twisted and yeah. stuff, triple yeah. zero. Now, I noticed that you cut that thing off there. I did, yes. And you said something about stock. Is that because at the end of the day, you've got to make sure that what you started the day with mm -hmm. ends up in there at the end of the day? Absolutely, so yeah. So someone's got to go and count and say, I had 10 bandages and I've only got nine. Nine take away, ten, uh, one. I need to put one. one more in to make it ten. That's it, yes. Okay, so someone's got to do maths as well as bandages and check things Yeah, out. so when we so cool. say goodnight to the ambulances at night, yeah. um, someone else might take it tomorrow. So Josh and I might not be on the same shift. Right. I have to make sure that she's ready to go tomorrow. Okay. So. Uh, do you have names for your ambulances? No, they have numbers. Okay. This is 959. Okay. One just means that we're in Sydney. Right. So we're ambulance 959. So okay. when we get called on the radio, that's what we're nine. listening for. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever feel like you want to name them, like Susie or Ozzy or? We can't get too attached. Oh, okay, because you might not be the same one. We have to share. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. Can we go inside as well? Hop on These in. These are awesome. Far out. This is crazy. Wow, there is so much stuff in here. It's very wow. fun. And it's really bright. It is. We need to be able to see very clearly. We do a lot of things in here, like yeah. a hospital. Yeah. Well, it's like a hospital on wheels, isn't it? Yeah. So that's why you've got so much stuff. And that's why there's a few chairs and what's this? This is our stretcher, it's not stretcher. the bed to sleep on. It's not the bed to sleep on, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. So this is where the patient or the injured person lays down and yep. gets treated on the way to hospital if that's where you need to go. Yeah, absolutely. Generally you do need to go if you're taking them in the ambulance, right? Yeah, yeah, most of the time. It's not always, you don't have to go to hospital. Yep. Um, sometimes we might be able to leave you at home or talk to your doctor. Right. But most of the time, um, if you're calling triple zero for an emergency, yes. you should be going to hospital, yeah. Okay. So you'll get put on a stretcher. This usually goes out there. Yep, Person's, like an aeroplane. Person gets on it and then gets put in here somehow. Maybe you can show me that later. I think so, that you can go for a cool. ride. Yes. Okay, and then what, do I, what does this person do? If um, I was a paramedic sitting in this chair, what's my job? You're gonna look after pretty much all of this for the person, all their breathing, this you're gonna up. talk to them, yeah. and you're gonna be looking after um, like the oxygen and that blue kit that we looked at outside. Oh, that's, that's the, the same spare thing. one, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, so that's all the breathing stuff. Oh my goodness, there's so much stuff in here. Amazing. All right, so I look after the breathing, and what do you do in your chair there? Okay, so we're a team. Right. So um, I can have some medications, like the green bag. Right. So we've got a spare green bag in here. So everything that's in the green bag is there. Yeah. And everything that's in the blue bag is here. Yeah. Amazing. So you can treat people in their house or wherever they've had an accident mm -hmm. or become injured, and then when you get them into the ambulance, you don't need to worry about your bags anymore. Everything's here. Yeah. It's yep. a really good system. Absolutely. So that way, um, we can bring the hospital not only in the ambulance, but to you, because if you're down on a dirt track doing yeah. BMX biking, or yep. we can't bring this big van, it doesn't fit many places. Yeah. That's right. All right, so there's lots of cool stuff around here. I see a, a cylinder here. Josh, what's this for? This is oxygen again, but oxygen. it's attached to the bed. Okay. So when we wheel it around, yeah, if, right. our, if our patient needs oxygen, yeah. we can still give it to them while And how do they get the oxygen? Um, Through this? No. Oh, well, it, it's a tube, but then that's connected to a mask, which are all up here. Okay. 
Oh, right, so you got spare masks up there. Oxy tubing. Oxygen tubing. That's the tube that connects to the mask, yeah. And then what's this thing? This, tape, this is a, a blood, pressure blood pressure dial. So okay. when you pump this up, yeah. you can get the reading on that. So Dakota would be doing the blood pressure from that seat and she can see it from there. So no it's really quite a nifty thing. Cool. So we've got lots of oxygen stuff. We've got spare parts and a burns kit. What's a burns kit? Well, if say for example, you were cooking something yeah. and you spilt it on yourself and, and burnt your skin. Yeah, right. This kit contains things that we can put on top of it. Okay. That will relieve, like ease, ease the pain and make you feel better okay. and also sterile things so you might you won't get an infection or something okay cool and then i see the last one down there i can see that label says maternity kit what's mat maternity is like little babies isn't it yeah yeah so sometimes you might get called to if someone's having a baby yeah and that has all the equipment what we would need to deliver it okay so if if a, a mother to be mm -hmm. can't make it to the hospital on time you guys can actually deliver a baby and help her help that baby be born yeah, yep. for sure. Absolutely. Amazing. Wow, that's that's a lot of responsibility. You guys really are real life superheroes. You help save lives <laughs> and then you bring lives into the world by delivering babies. What a cool job. What a rewarding job. Yeah, incredible. Mate, how long have you been working in this job? Seven years. Seven years. And what do you love about it? Uh, everything day to day and helping people is the is the most rewarding thing. Yeah. yeah so any kids out there that want to become paramedics, then you've got to work hard at school. You've got to set your sights on becoming a paramedic and you've got to stay keen until you get there. We'll head around the back here and there's more stuff around here. What's all this stuff? We've got some lots of bags and stuff. Is there anything that you want to show me here? Oh, why don't we show you the chair? The chair? We use to get people out of tight spaces like down hallways in their house, in their yeah. bedroom. Folds up flat. There you go. You're Look right. at that. I just have to take the brakes off. A skinny wheelchair. And we can wheel you around. Okay. Look at that. That's cool. All right. This hospital on wheels really does have everything. I see you've got some um, some boards here. Yep. Spine board for carrying people out if they can't walk. Okay. All right. And then this is the stretcher. The stretcher. So exactly. Can we see that one come out? Yeah. Of course. Knob here and it just pulls out. It's all automatic. Yeah, right. Whoa, that's crazy. Oh. No way. Just like that. Oh, that's very, very clever. So it's got this cr crazy contraption here that makes it go up and down and then puts it into the, the back of the ambulance for you. Yeah, straight back in. Really, really cool. All right, so if I'm injured, I call triple zero, or someone calls triple zero for me, yep. gives them their home address, or wherever it is that I've had an injury. You guys come out, and then you give me some treatment. I end up on here, and I end up in there, and then I'm off to hospital. Exactly. Can we maybe just um, pretend that I've done an injury, and we can do all that kind of stuff? Yeah, why not? Awesome. Sounds great. All right, what have I done? What have I injured? I don't know, where are you sore? Oh, I've got a sore leg. Oh no. I think you might have to sit down. You'll okay. be standing on All such right. a sore leg. I'll sit down here, shall All I? All right. All right, Josh, you start. I'm going to get you some equipment. All right. First thing we'll do is ask you what happened. What happened? Um, I was just running through the street and I tripped over and um, it, you can see my leg. I mean, it's broken, I, I think. It's like sideways. Oh, it? it looks sore, that's for sure, yeah. Yeah? All right. And how is your pain? Uh, it's, it's excruciating. Excruciating. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to try and immobilise this leg. Okay and then we'll get you up to hospital for an x-ray so all we can right. see what's, if there's anything damaged with it, all right? Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right, I'm getting you a splint and we'll do some observations on you as well. I'll okay. leave this one for you, Josh. You've got your trauma kit just behind you as well. Ozzy, I'm gonna take your blood pressure, is that okay? Oh, yes, please. Because when someone's hurt, even if it's a broken leg, we have to make sure that their vital signs are okay. Okay, their vital signs, like yeah, their blood so pressure. Yeah, so vital signs means blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen. Okay. Yeah? Because if you've hurt your leg, you might not notice that you've got a big cut on your back. Right. You don't have a cut on your back. No. But you might not notice it. So that's our job. Okay. Is to make sure you're safe everywhere. Right. Yeah? So we've got to make sure you're not bleeding from anywhere. Yep. 
This one goes around our arm. This line here goes on, I'm sure you've probably seen, and you can look on mummy or daddy maybe, kids. There's got big veins here. Ah, uh, yes. That's what that line lines up with. Okay. And we're gonna read your blood pressure along there, okay? okay? We press the blood pressure button. We're gonna watch this number go up. Okay. Perfect numbers. We've is got that your good? blood pressure and your heart rate here is 70, which is really good. Okay. Okay, your blood pressure can change for lots of things. And if you're in pain, it can be a little bit higher than normal, which is okay. Okay. All right. Oh, that's good. That's, so that's a good sign. I get a big green tick for that one. You do. Yes. What have you got there, Josh? Oh, this is a splint I've assembled. This will help with the pain of your leg so we can keep it still. Okay. All your, all your vital signs we can check are good. So, okay. yeah, we'll be right to go to hospital when That's we get good. this on, okay? Excellent. So now I'm going to get Dakota to support your leg. Okay. You don't have to do anything. Okay. Just relax. All right. And we're going to slide this straight across, okay? Good. All right, Ozzy, this might be a little bit sore, but I'll be very gentle, okay? okay. Yep. Is this where it's sore right here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you stay nice and still for me. Okay. Take a big, deep breath. All right, in and out. So good, you're being really brave. In and out. Okay, I'm gonna pop it back down. All righty, so good, Ozzy. Now, one more time. I'll pick this up, no, Josh, if you wanna grab this. Okay, and big deep breath in, Ozzy. One more time. So good, you're doing so well. All right. I'm in very good hands, that's why I'm, I'm you doing are. so well. All right. Now we're just going to tie these up so you okay. might feel a little bit of pressure. Alright. So if I was to hurt my leg, this is what, what you guys would do. You've got a splint there to immobilise it. Is that the word I'm yeah. looking for? Yeah. So we're going to keep, if it's a broken bone, we're going to keep it still. That's what immobilising means. Okay. And what we're going to do is we tie these little bandages to keep the um, splint in place. Right. And we tie one big knot above where we think you may have broken it. Right. And one below. Okay. And so that's going to keep that nice and still. Right. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got to get you onto the bed. Right. Okay. Sometimes we can call fireys. Okay. Our friends at Fire New South Wales come and help us lift big people. Yep. But I think because you're muscly, we're going to be able to use that good leg of yours okay. and you can help us hop on the bed. All right. All right. Sounds good. So, Ozzy, I'm going to hold your sore leg. Yes. Um, and Josh is going to help you up, okay? And you're okay. going to use that good leg yep. to push off the ground. Yep. And your bottom is going to come and sit right here, okay? okay? All right. And I'm going to do the heavy lifting of this one. All right, it's going to be a bit sore, okay. but it'll be over real soon, okay? Okay, okay you ready? Take I am. Here. Yeah. All right. You're All right, on three, you're going to push hard, Ozzy. One, two, three. Oh, oh onto the bed. Ah. So good. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's All right, cozy. Ozzy, how are you feeling now? Up off the ground. Feeling comfortable. Yeah, yeah. good, good. Feels good. All right, let's get you strapped in. We've got to put our seatbelts on. We'll pop you in the ambulance and we'll go get an x-ray at the hospital. Okay. See what we've done to our leg, Excellent. okay? Hopefully it's nothing too serious. So we have more seatbelts than normal cars. Okay. Because you're laying down, if we got in a big accident, we need to make sure that you're not going to roll anywhere. Yes. All right? So our job is to keep you safe. And secure. And secure, here we go. Last one. Alrighty. Feeling nice and secure, nice and safe. Alrighty, Josh. This is the fun part. Yeah. So I'm gonna go inside there. Yeah, we're gonna come up. Woo! Wow. This is cool. All right, you ready? And then you let the robot do its work, and off we go. Peekaboo, Ozzy. Oh, hello. We're back. We're back. Welcome. All right. So now I'm inside the ambulance. Off we go to hospital. How good. 
All right, I think we're ready, Dakota. We're ready. We're off to the hospital. Bye, kids. See ya. I'm gonna be okay. It's all okay. I'm fixed. Turns out I just needed a band-aid. Lucky I didn't call triple zero in real life because I wouldn't call triple zero for, for a band-aid. Guys, thank you so much for taking good care of me today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for teaching myself and all the kids out there all about what you do, the important role you play in keeping people safe and healthy, treating them and getting them off to hospital so that they can not get a band-aid but get their real injuries looked after. All right, kids, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. A couple of little things I hope you've learnt. Only call triple zero if it's a real emergency. And kids, make sure you practice your home address because it's really important that you know where you live so that you can tell the ambulance where to come, right? Very important. Kids, hope you've loved it. We'll see you on a brand new episode of Aussie this weekend. Until then, stay keen. If you haven't already, make sure you get a grade up to help you hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any of the new and exciting videos that we put out. Speaking of new and exciting, if there's a video that you'd love to see Aussie do, make sure you send us a message on our socials, on Facebook or Instagram at Aussie for Kids. We'll see you again soon, kids. And until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right, stay keen, kids. Aussie, 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 oi. Ozzy is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. Get out, Ozzy. Get out, Ozzy. Get out, Ozzy. Get out, Ozzy. Now, I believe you were going to show us a few trucks that we got here. Yeah, I've got a few trucks up in the engine bay. Oh, all right. Let's go this way. Sounds good. Go, kids. actually a noise for an emergency, Ozzy. We've got to go. We've got to go? Yeah, we've got a job. Um, can I come? Yeah, of course you can. Ready? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go, kids. So we've got an incident at the end of the maintenance center, Oscar. Okay. So both trucks are going. Both trucks. Yeah, you're off and off. Let's roll. Let's go. Ready? Ready to go? Yeah, all good. Ready Come on. Those train wheels on the track. Yep. Oh, I feel it's going up. Yep. So that's the front wheels off the rail. Yeah.
Vancouver outcome. Everyone's safe. Everyone's safe. It's all done now. We're going to talk about All right, let's go. <laughs> G'day kids, Ozzy here. Now just before we get stuck into today's episode, if you haven't seen it already, our merchandise is now live on our website, aussieforkids.com, where you can get all of your favorite Aussie items, like the Aussie hat, made especially for kids' heads, or the mini replica Aussie tea. How cool is that? All for our mini Aussie fans. And if you love Aussie that much, you can even get three things in a combo, a hat, a shirt, and a sweatband, all on our website. But one of my favorite items is this one, the Aussie socks with this little touch here. Stay keen, kids, as always. Available right now on our website, aussieforkids.com. In the meantime, kids, enjoy this episode and stay keen. Aussie, 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 oi! Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day, Aussie. 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 G'day, now what's better than a train and a fire engine? A fire engine that can go on train tracks. I know it's insane. We're gonna go and find one inside and learn all about the job these guys do. Come and join Aussie, this is gonna be fun. Check this out, the rail, fire and emergency. Let's go and find someone who can tell us all about what they get up to here. Come this way. G'day mate. Hey Aussie, how are you? I'm well, what's your name? My name's Tim. Tim, nice to meet you. Same to you. Thanks for having us here today. Yep. Now, I believe you were going to show us a few trucks that you got here. Yeah, I've got a few trucks up in the engine bay. All right. Let's go this way. Sounds good. Let's go, kids. We're going to see what this place is all about. And Tim's going to show us some fire trucks. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. Amazing. One of a kind in Australia. All right. And what type of truck is this called? Has it got a special name? This is called a high rail vehicle. A high rail vehicle? HRV. HRV. Yep. All right. To me, it looks pretty similar to the other one. It's got wheels, it's big, it's red, it's got some, some fluoro colours, and it's got your logo on it, but what makes it different? So what makes this one different is if you look under here, Aussie, we've got some train wheels, as the kids would know it. So these wheels lower down on the ground at the front and the back of the truck, the truck raises up, and we can actually drive it on the train track. So this is like a, a hybrid vehicle. It can drive on the road and on the train tracks. That is correct. That is clever. Yeah. And it's one of a kind. One of a kind. And you've got it. Yep. And we get to see it. Yes, of course you do. Amazing. All right, so can you give me a little walk around and show me all the different parts of this one? Yep, we'll go down this way first. Come on, kids. So okay. this locker has a big fan. Big fan. Big and small hoses. Okay. So yep. you use the big hose to get more water. Yep. The smaller hose, smaller fittings, to get less water. Yes. So for a smaller fire. Yep. Yeah, okay. That makes sense to me. Big water, big fire. Small water, small fire. Well, that makes sense to me too. <laughs> Hopefully it makes sense to the kids. Exactly. All right. So I'll show you in there in a minute. Oh, that looks different. It'll we'll look come better. back to that. Okay. And we've got, oh, we learned about this one just over on the other truck, but this one's pretty big. What's this one's called? It's called a branch. Yep, that's correct. Just the bigger one. Yep, and forward and backwards. And you can twist this one left and right. The pencil or the fog. <laughs> All right, what is that? So this here is a special submersible pump that we've got. Works on low pressure oil. We can actually put this in tunnels or in pits okay. and it can move 6,000 litres a minute. So it can pump the water out? Yes. Right, so sometimes you're pumping the water onto flames to put them out, but in this occasion, you would use this to pump water out of something where too much water's got into. Yep, so for example, one of our tunnels here in Sydney is commonly floods right. after big uh, rain. So we okay. actually go out there, put this in, and use the range of hoses here. Oh, that's what all those hoses are for. Yep. There is plenty there, isn't there? And we can put this in and pump out. We've actually sat there and pumped for 20 hours straight before. 20 hours. So this would be useful if uh, one of the tunnels fills up with water and the train line is can't, can't go through there. The trains can't go through there, right? Yep, that's there's water correct. in it. So you guys come in, pump all the water out, and then the trains can just get back to normal 
taking commuters and passengers all around the city. Yes. Yep. Very clever. You've got a lot of safety gear when you're being called out to a, a job. Yep. So what do we start with? A helmet? You've got to keep your, he your head safe, right? Yep. So that's one helmet of ours. So we use that for um, structure fires, um, train fires, that type of thing. Okay. So it's got a visor on the front. Yeah, right. To protect our face. Okay. Also internal comms, so it connects it onto our radio. Wow. So it actually comes down in front of us. That's clever. And the speaker's in the ear there. Okay, so you can hear and talk and stay safe at all at the yeah, same time. Yeah, so most people call it a fighter helmet, fighter jet helmet. Yeah, it looks like one. That's really <laughs> cool. That's awesome. You got a couple of jackets there. Yep, so this is, the this is our structural firefighting gear. Okay. It's what everyone normally sees. Yes. So a set of pants with suspenders. Really thick. And then our jacket. And in the jacket, we have a torch to help us see again, and then gloves to protect our hands. Protect your hands. That gives us light so we can see. And it's really thick material to keep you, one, to keep you warm, but two, to keep you protected from the flames. Mainly we keep us protected. Yep. Of course. And reflective strips so that other people can see you and you can see other people. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I guess if you've got a torch and you shine that towards one of these, it'll reflect yes. a lot, won't it? Yeah. Yep. Cool. Makes it a bit yeah. easier for cars to see as well, so if we're near a roadway or anything, of course. We'll reflect in the middle of the yeah, night. Yeah, great. Safety first. Yep, safety first. Now, we're going to need to keep our feet protected. You've got some pretty strong boots there. There we go. There's the boots. All right, so the volleys won't cut it. Then, then... <laughs> oh, back. Back 20 years ago, they might have cut it, not yeah. anymore. <laughs> not, not so safe in the volleys. You need to have these ones. Probably got it, yeah, steel cap. Protect your toes, really strong. Yep, cool. Yep. And they're actually waterproof up to there. Wow, okay. So you can actually go in the water. All right, so it keeps your feet dry. Yep. They're cool. And then you've got a different jacket. Different jacket, so. Okay. This is known as our multi-purpose. So we can use this for bushfires, rescues, Okay. Type of thing, or general purpose jobs. Okay. Something where we need protection, but we don't need the thickness of this, right. so we actually don't get hot. Okay. So. Very yeah. good. So you've got a lot of gear. Yes. Fantastic. Lots of gear. Now, all right. So what do we got here? So this is the thermal camera I was talking about. Okay. And what does the thermal camera do? So the thermal camera helps firefighters and other rescue personnel locate hot spots, people, anything that'll actually show up a heat source. Oh, okay. All right. So what I'll do is I'll. Put a battery in it and turn it on and show you. Right. This is really cool. Yeah, if you go stand over there. There you go, do a little dance. <laughs> Even if you rub your foot, rub your foot there. Wow. The friction that's causing that. That's heat. amazing. Okay, so that can pick up, that's used to pick up people that you might not be able to see, they might be further down the end of a train or something, and you just point that towards the direction, yep. and then you'll, you'll pick them up if they're, because they're body heat. Yep, so it's Amazing. great in, um, at night time, in dark environments, right. smoke filled environments, yeah, of course, to find people. Amazing. So, yeah. Such good equipment. Jump in there, Ozzy. Oh, how good. And I'll meet you on the other side. Cut my handle so that I can get up safely. Oh. Here he is, Tim's on the other side. So Tim's the driver and I'm the passenger. Yep. So right. this is the front of the truck. Steering wheel, gear stick, electronic device. Okay. That provides us details going to the incident. Like an iPad? Yeah, like an iPad. So you can play games? No, 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 games. no, 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 no games. Oh, we try, but the boss won't let it. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so that'll give us the information about where we need to go and what we're responding to? Yes, that's correct. Okay, very cool. Um, and then all the controls to operate the train wheels, the lights and everything on here. Very good. And you said train wheels, not training wheels. Yeah, train wheels. Right, so it's not like the wheels you have on bikes. <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah. Right. Okay, so they're the train <laughs> wheels underneath. All right, and you've got a, a radio here. Yep. Breaker Breaker, this is Ozzy coming in to, uh, to rescue uh, people in Central Station. <laughs> Something like that? <laughs> Probably not. That's okay, I'm learning. All right, and what have we got some tanks here I see? Uh, so these are cylinders, the same as what you've seen in the back. Yes. They've got air in them. Okay. But this is actually for the driver and for yourself. Okay. So if we go into a smoke-filled environment, we can actually put that on and I can actually be wearing that driving through the smoke-filled environment. Okay. So, so you're not breathing in the smoke and yes. getting yourself sick and passing out. Yeah, don't right. get sick, don't pass out. Yep. None of that bad Very stuff. Very good. 
So there's, there's that's two people. There's yourself and then a, a passenger. Yep. How many other uh, people work on a crew that get called out to an incident? Uh, rangers from day to day. Like we've got three of us today. Three that okay. work together. Some days we have four. All right. So, yeah. And will they ride in the back, or they go in another vehicle? Uh, so if we get an incident, the main pump will go, and then if this one's required, then this one will follow on. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so yeah. you could drive either. You're yes. qualified to do all of it. Yep. That's correct. How good's that? What a great job. <laughs> Skilled for everything. Absolutely. Tim. What's that noise? That's actually a noise for an emergency, Aussie. We've got to go. We've got to go? Yeah, we've got a job. Um, can I come? Yeah, of course you can. Ready? Oh, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go, kids. A real emergency, and we're allowed to join Join in! This is next level. So what do we got here, Tim? So we've got an incident at the Everly Maintenance Centre, Oscar. Okay. So both trucks are going. Both trucks? You ready to rock and roll? Let's roll. Let's go. I guess I'm going to need some safety gear. Yeah, I've got some for you. Yes. Once that one goes, you and I will get dressed and we'll right. follow on. Alrighty. Two real firefighters in the truck, in the pump, ready to go. And then Tim and I are going to get our gear on. I'm going to jump in the HRV. Now the lights are on, but it's important to remain calm. It's all new to me, so I'm a little bit excited. You can see how the firefighters and Tim are remaining calm. So can I use this? Throw this gear on, Ozzy. Alrighty. Oh, am I Ready? good to go? Yeah, all good. Grab Tell your helmet. Me. You can zip it up in the truck. All right. Let's go, kids. You can Surround come with your us. Side. I'll ride in the front. Yep, jump in the front. Tim, where are we heading? We're heading to Everly Maintenance Centre. Everly Maintenance Centre. And did it say what we're responding to? Uh, we've got a train incident there that we possibly need the high rail to get to. Wow. So we're going to drive over Everly on the roads, then we're going to put the train wheels down and go on the track. Yep, that's correct. And our other primary pump is actually on its way there already. It's already on its way. <laughs> Coming into the Everly Maintenance Centre. Okay. We've still got to be careful because we can still have trains driving through. Right.
We made it. Kids, that was exciting. And that was well driven by Tim and it's the crew directing him there so that he could line those train wheels up with the tracks and then lower them, which lifts the front wheels off the track. Look at the back ones, they're floating. This is unreal. But I think this is where my journey ends. The guys have got to go off to the incident. So we're going to wave them goodbye and wish them all the best. But how lucky are we getting to come along with these guys? Yo kids, what an awesome experience that was, getting to meet some of the team from the fire, rail and emergency services. And how cool is that fire truck with the train wheels that come out the bottom and go on the tracks? Amazing. Kids, I hope you loved it as much as I did. We'll see you on another brand new episode of Aussie coming up this Sunday. And until then, stay keen and stay safe. If you haven't already, make sure you get a grade up to help you hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any of the new and exciting videos that we put out. Speaking of new and exciting, if there's a video that you'd love to see Aussie do, make sure you send us a message on our socials, on Facebook or Instagram at Aussie for Kids. We'll see you again soon kids, and until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right, stay keen kids. Ozzy, 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 Oi! Ozzy is a friend of yours and he's a friend of...